Okay, I am sitting here with uh, Nick Dunn, he's the director of NBCC's um, adopted charity, Bead House, in Southeast London. And as everyone else, uh, Bead House and uh, he, uh, the clients and Nick and his staff is, of course, um, uh, hit by this. So, how, Nick, how, how do you cope in this time of, of uh, struggle and uncertainty? Okay, it's, uh, we've had to change very, very quickly. Um, all of our staff are either working at home or we've just begun to furlough people under the new government scheme because we had to close our youth project and our learning disabilities project, both of which involve people coming into the centre for group activities. So clearly that couldn't continue. So people very, very quickly have had to adapt to different ways of communicating and keeping in touch with everybody, colleagues, clients, and the families that, uh, that, that they're part of. Some of that's been using technology like this. Others have been good old telephones and WhatsApps and, and all of those sorts of things. So morale is good at the moment, but everybody's waiting really to see what, what happens next and how long everything's gonna yeah. go on like this for. Yeah. Uh, so, what, what special needs? I mean, uh, are you facing the, the, this thing? What, what's most pressing? What's happening uh, with your clients? Or, or, well, I think the initially there was concerns about is everybody getting the food that they need, and there are a few um, of our clients who have got no money, for example, um, or are unable to go out because. Um, either they're ill themselves or they've got a number of, of um, children or you know disabled uh, people that they're caring for mm. so that was a, f a first anxiety was about how people were just getting the basic essentials yeah. and we helped um, out in the, in that way in a very informal way in the first few days but now we're hoping that uh, food banks and the, the local authority responses will, will begin to to kick in in a much more organized way and our job then is to keep in touch with our families to make sure they know who to contact, uh, how to get the help that they need. I think we've found that the, the most important thing that we can give people is that reassurance um, from, from people that they know and trust. And so those telephone conversations for some uh, yeah. are, the, are the only telephone conversation they're getting at the moment uh, because they are stuck behind doors uh, with all the pressures that that, uh, that brings. I think the area that we're most concerned about are people who are in abusive relationships at home because our domestic violence team um, are being kept very busy indeed, uh, taking new referrals um, because as you could imagine, if you're in a, an abusive or a violent relationship and you're having to spend a lot of time together, then the risks are uh, increasing and I think across the country indeed across the world police have, have, have been seeing an increase in reports to them and those then filter down to us happily telephone um, email even face-to-face -face conversations like this can help people get get the advice get the guidance they need and live a bit more safely in what is otherwise a very risky situation yeah. It is horrible though. I mean, uh, domestic violence is, is uh, disgusting in itself, but, but in, in a situation like this, it's, it's, uh, uh, can it be worse? Yes, it can possibly. And it's, uh, uh, but you never hear anything about that on the news either. I didn't know that until you told me uh, now recently. Yeah. So uh, horrible. Um, but, and how do you respond then to, to, to a situation like that? And is there any anything in particular that you need as an organization well i think that the um uh the key thing as always is is to keep your keep the teams together keep people um focused on if they're able to to do their job um remotely keep people focused on that um if they're not um, and perhaps they've got priorities for their own families and, and, and those that they're caring, caring for. We know one or two people who've, who are very concerned about the uh, people close to them, yeah. that they've got reassurance and that um, 
the organization b is supporting them as much as the people that we've built so because the aim is that we've been around for over 80 years um our aim is to get through this and be around for 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 years to come to to give the support the local people need when when things get uh, get tough um i mean i think that so the first point um, naturally everybody has um anxious about um whether the funding will continue to come in particularly if our regular services have stopped mm. and many of the funders we've been in touch with have been very uh, reassuring in that that respect which is is great but others are still trying to work out the position themselves and um so there's a degree of uncertainty about the future but we're just trying to take that as a day at a time and try to keep a realistic perspective not get too anxious but also not be complacent as well so i think our first message has been to our funders and supporters is if you can if it's if it's possible to do so please keep on supporting us because that's that's the sort of thing that's reassurance that we need to to get through this month good good uh, all right we have to leave it there uh, just one thing uh, we are you are the adopter charity of nbcc and people can uh, donate money through our webpage uh, nbccuk.com or directly to, to to nick and his team so thank you very much nick um, thank you Kevin. thanks to everybody my pleasure okay goodbye cheers bye <laughs>